Okay, so next up we have Steve Reed. Steve is with with Q Markets, and and like I mentioned earlier, that Q Markets and I are, are working to uh, to set up a messaging service that is similar <clears throat> to uh, an existing business to business messaging service that most of us use, uh, but it's just going to be focused around the the ecosystem. And we also have uh, recently put a proposal together for a federal type of uh, ecosystem. So I wanted to bring them on because what they do is is in, it, it's around innovation, it's around companies. <laughs> it's the only messaging media service that I have found that will actually allow you to customize it. So most people want to give you what they have. They want to bring you into their community but they will allow you to and and steve you'll have to correct me if i lie here but i, I believe that uh, for most people they will allow you to to, to operate standalone yep, so uh, eric if you wouldn't mind turning off your video and i'm going to go ahead and turn this over to steve reed with q markets right all right let me uh and i apologize i uh was planning on showing up a little earlier and uh let's just say things happen so but and long story short we have a New freezer. We have saved uh, everything in that freezer in the garage. But uh, I was, if you see sweat coming down my head, it's I was racing to get back from Home Depot. So, all right, a um, little bit about Q Markets. So, um, <clears throat> let's see here. Let's let someone in. So, Q Markets is an innovation management platform. So, um, you'll probably see some things you've never seen before. Um, the the interesting part about what we do is, unless you specifically are in a IT role, an R&D role, or innovation. Uh, most people have never heard of this market, although I would tell you uh, out of the Fortune 500, 90% of them either have our platform or one of our competitors. So it is a very, um, yeah, it's a very detailed group. I'll, I'll kind of walk you through what we do, but we've been doing this for almost 20 years uh, to, to move this to a federal slash uh, uh, government um, perspective, we work with, uh, like I heard Navy mention, Navy Fed, Federal Reserve Bank, uh, the Israeli White House, Israeli DOD, uh, Raytheon, BAE Systems, Curtis Wright, um, uh, kind of on and on. Federal, state, local, City of Atlanta uses our platform, um, State of Iowa, uh, University Networks. It's, it's a pretty well spread out uh, group and then internationally uh, and nationally u.s uh, chick-fil-a is one that everyone mm -hmm. likes to hear starbucks chick-fil-a intel amazon mcdonald's uh, ford Van volkswagen semex uh, really a orlando magic i heard someone's in orlando we we worked with the orlando magic they use our platform to engage their season ticket holders so first off we are not a survey tool we're not a uh, i did hear the term messaging that's certainly not um, what we do it's a it's something that's built into the tool um here, here's a high level look at so if you were to start on the left side here pick name any company in the world um chevron is a is a new client um they are trying to figure out where they're headed as a company and so our platform enables again the starbucks the chevrons uh raytheon is here where i am in mckinney texas they're they've got a big big uh site here and so what they do is is really three things. This is what the, the common thing between all our clients is they're trying to figure out what are the business needs? What problems do we have? What opportunities do we see? Not just this year and next year, but in five years and 10 years. And our platform has a series of tools that all speak to each other. This is where the, the companies kind of light up because picture at Raytheon, my guy Sheldon is is sitting in, in Denver doing innovation. Uh, the VP is in uh, Southern California over innovation. Uh, and then you've got R&D spread out from DC all the way across. And oh, by the way, there's a connection in Europe that has a separate instance. All these groups are doing their own thing, right? So our tool allows you, and you'll see in a second how it works. But um, so, so when a company is put, let's say a challenge comes into a company, hey, how are we going to solve this? The first thing they look at is is one of these three things. It starts with, is there a technology or a trend that we could take advantage of? AI, machine learning, uh, robotics, um, 
we've got some really cool case studies with companies that some of them we can't mention where they're moving, they're taking their, as an auto manufacturer, their robotic skill. And three years later, they've identified um, that there's a gap in healthcare using robotics. They purchased a startup using our Q Scout tool and have taken that startup. And in what we what the case study would tell you is this normally takes five to ten years to build a whole new product line and a whole new division and have it up and running. And they're doing it in in two years, right? So our tool scales and automates everything. So trends we'll cover it. We won't cover that too much. Uh, scouting, I will touch because these are the big two ways. So last week I was in Atlanta and, and three of our clients were in a room together, Chick-fil-A, Home Depot, and Coca-Cola, who are all Atlanta-based, so it was really convenient. They all said the same thing. We are trying more and more to find startups that do what we want as opposed to building everything. We don't want to build and spend resources when we know there's much more qualified companies out there. So um, I in a in a perfect world and i'll jump over to the powerpoint now or to the platform in a perfect world a company comes in and says give me one sec here i'll switch just so you can see it all right so this is our platform it's cloud-based although as you imagine most government entities are on premise so we offer both they they can host it themselves it's not required that they use aws cloud but uh, Federal Reserve Bank, for example, uses the, our cloud service and uh, the only U.S. There's only a few U.S. ones that are not cloud based and one of them's, uh, rate, you know, defense contractors generally can't have the data leave a certain area. So everyone else, whether it's healthcare, government, fed, local, state, and then everything in between, it's all cloud at this point. So that's become a very right common, uh, common uh, touch point. So um, so when a client let's just pick the the concept of a challenge right so in the old days people would have a hackathon and they'd spend six months and then get a bunch of people in a room and they'd submit ideas and out of that they have a bunch of ideas and then they'd put them on a spreadsheet and a week later they'd sit on that spreadsheet and then they'd go well where do we go from here and then this starts a series of meetings right okay we have to have a meeting and we need to bring in people um bottom line is a company like nestle nestle's been a customer 10 years uh nestle 10 years ago said if they had an idea let's take nutella they said hey we've got a product and we want we want to develop this by the time they went through all the steps that it takes to get to the final product on the shelf, they would have said it's between 12 and 18 months minimum to, to get a product, right, with all the hurdles that are there. Today, uh, Nestle puts things on the shelf from the minute someone has an idea, it ends up on the shelf as soon as two months, right, sometimes quicker, but on average, two to three months is how quickly they can move with our platform. So. The platform has a, a bunch of automation into it, a bunch of features that allow companies to, uh, you know, to move things much quicker, to make decisions quicker. And and there's AI and different analytics built into it. So so I'll cover a little bit um, just to walk through. Right. Let's say I worked for CBRE or Clayton Homes or both clients uh, of, of ours. Let's say they're trying to come up with new materials. Right. They they've identified they spend a lot of money uh, and it's a one-time use case um, they would then go to their crowd right uh, so it is an element of crowdsourcing for ideation um, so as an example here's semex's crowdsourcing page this one's open they're one of our our bigger clients they're constantly looking for startups right hey we're, we have supply chain issues uh, Semex, Black & Veatch, Hilti, these are all clients of ours as well, Ferrovio uh, in Spain. So they all got together and said, let's share knowledge. And we see we see that as a trend more and more. Companies are going, especially with cybersecurity issues, especially with AI, let's share knowledge here because this stuff is very precarious, right? Um, UBS has an open page where they invite startups to help them with sustainable banking, right? These are some examples of open clients that are looking for externals. Um, Starbucks, right? They have a tool called the, 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 the Trier, right? If you go to Seattle, if you ever stop by their headquarters, they have a store and it's a virtual store that anyone can walk into and create things, come up with product and service ideas. Chick-fil-A has one as well. It's called... Um, it's called hatch, meaning hatch that idea. It's where all ideas start at Chick-fil-A. What they all have in common is is our platform is is going to collect these ideas, 
you could literally invite anyone in the world. We did a challenge with, um, uh, uh, what do you call the company? Uh, not Exxon, but uh, if, um, uh, Total. Total Oil did a, a challenge. They invited over a million people um, to to help solve it. Now, generally, we don't see that. That's that's not a great use of of, of the tool. But uh, if I had an idea, instead of a hackathon where I've got to be in a room, I can be anywhere in the world. I can watch the resource videos. I can see. Uh, here's the documents to help you prep for what you're going to submit. I can see the team that's going to help mentor. Most most of our clients have a innovation lab. They have an incubator program. They have uh, an innovation stand-up group that is helping when they see good ideas come in. They're available. And then ultimately, every project has a sponsor, and that tells people, hey, we we're not only going to look at your ideas, we're going to fund these ideas if we like them. We're going to build something, right? Uh, and everybody's goal is different. Some people, it's operational excellence, cost savings. For the government, it's a lot of operational excellence. It's improving uh, uh, consumer experience is a big one. It's not usually new products and services, right? So, um, but the tool, uh, as you uh, use it, you'll see one thing. So picture this is Raytheon, well, not Raytheon, let's just go with again, uh, uh, CBRE. They're looking for some ideas on how to reduce cost and to be a greener company. So uh, let's say I saw a video and it talked about how drones are being used for, and it went through a hundred use cases. In fact, I saw a cool one in China. I don't know if you guys saw this, but uh, this video of, and I immediately thought of the, the, the Twin Towers, but these drones are equipped and they go straight up and down with hoses attached to them and they can immediately start putting out the fire, right? So instead of having, of course the fire department comes, but now they've just got a stockpile of drones that have hoses attached to them and they just move up and down and hit the fire at every angle. And obviously the the life and uh, property savings on that are, 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 are probably hard to calculate. So let's say we wanted to use drones at CBRE to do, uh, uh, to do inventory. So you're seeing on the right here, it is searching and it's not searching just ideas. Uh, CBRE has a scout team. They're looking for startups. It says, hey, we, we, here's some trends around how companies are using uh, drones that our trend team has calculated. Here's some startups that uh, have been identified that, that you might wanna look at. And the goal here is this company here, Flyware, may have the solution we need. So why would we as CBRE invest millions of dollars when our scouting team is already talking to this company here? In fact, I can see uh, they've just met with them, right? It's it's moving through the workflow process. So um, I'm not gonna spend too much time on submitting, but just imagine this is to, to Eugene, to your point, everything's customizable. So you define the questions, the topics, the fields, the workflow process. Um, I can be confidential, which is important at companies like Ford and 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 again Raytheon that have IP, but Intel. They don't want people seeing the idea, so they might say, "Hey, please, this one goes directly to the innovation team to make a decision." Or, "Hey, let's take our name off it." Right. So, City of Atlanta did a innovation project with us where they asked their they had a high turnover rate with their bus drivers and they used the platform to uh, invite several hundred bus drivers to say, why are, why are you leaving, right? They lost 25% of their workforce year over year, two years in a row. They used our platform anonymously and people submitted the same idea, which was, uh, and here's an example of what it does. It clustered all the ideas, didn't matter what you were saying, it's taking keywords and phrases and saying, here's the voice of what's coming in. Right, we're, we're we're struggling with new technologies. We're, we're, we have gaps with you know onboarding new employees. Our customer service, right? Here's some ideas around that. So, um, at the city of Atlanta, it was safety. It was an obvious one. And people that the the highest churn rate was people that worked the night shift, that worked in certain parts of the town. They were completely unsafe. And so they took that problem and then created a challenge and said, how would you solve this problem? And that's where all these creative ideas came in that they've implemented. Some of them sound really simple, but every night a uh, security officer uh, would get on and off a bus at certain parts of town. And all he did was greeted everyone that got on. He sat there and said hello every time someone got on the bus. You would not believe the 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 incident rate of bus drivers being 
hit, whatever, uh, abused, feeling threatened, dropped almost to zero within six months of doing this. So now they have this whole program where at the MARTA stations, which is where you take light rail and you go to your car, they now have someone, um, that's all they do. They go up and down that elevator. They have someone during certain times that, that just greets people, right? So the, some of these basic ideas save safety, uh, you know, uh, tourism, uh, turnover, uh, culture, right? Employee satisfaction. So just as one example. So so the tool starts with collecting ideas. That's the easy part. In fact, you could do that on a spreadsheet. You wouldn't need a platform. But where the tool sticks out is I come in now and I work for Intel and I see an idea, not a very creative one, right? This is just an idea, just as an example. I can see what it is and I can I can give some feedback on it, which I just did. I can give comments, but what most our clients like to do is to say at Intel, if three or more people volunteer to be, to help out someone with an idea, so let's say I, I like this idea, hey, I'd be happy to uh, help with the business case. And here's why, right? Again, customizable fields. Maybe I say I'm in finance. Uh, I have an expertise in this area. Here's what I could do. And Intel does the old 10% uh, of your time can be donated to special projects. So I say yeah, I can donate 10 hours, 15 hours. Uh, and all of a sudden now I've got a group of people to help build the idea, right? So so the, it's not just idea submission and people commenting. The tool is matchmaking, right? It's looking for people who can help out with the project. Uh, it's building a community. So when I work for the Federal Reserve Bank, anytime someone uh, gets involved in a project, I see them here so that as the ideation, like as the head of uh, you know project management, I can say, who do we have in IT that's done coding before that I could bring in and who's done it in the last quarter, right? So I can I can quickly drill down and see Kim is not only someone that knows how to do it, but she's done it uh, recently. So, and every time someone engages with the platform, it's building a network, right? So uh, you can run challenges, you can take open submissions. Uh, the advantage of a tool like this versus, again, just sending an email is, let's say I had a really great idea, right? It was something internally that would would help us. Doesn't matter, you know, our app uh, needs to add. I work with a big uh, provider of Medicare, Medicaid. Um, they realized their app needed to be updated. It came from an idea. They said, do you realize if we just added XYZ features, uh, we would significantly reduce call times. We would significantly reduce whatever. So you can see it's, again, suggesting. But when I say this is a client, idea and I hit submit, um, it immediately goes to whoever owns that that category. So if it was, again, client experience, if it was customer experience, if it was r and I, I can designate that someone from R&D immediately gets the idea, gets to look at it. And if I'm a manager in R&D, I could approve it and say, yeah, let's move it to the next step. So um, you would think gamification isn't a big motivator. It is. Um, people like being allowed to build ideas. People like being recognized for, you know, there, there's a lot of companies doing shark tanks now. So that's become a, a bigger and a bigger trend. And the system's transparent. So I don't have to wonder what happened to my idea, right? Where Where is it? I, I submitted it six months ago to my boss. What happened to it? So the tool ultimately, and we'll get to the, is a customizable workflow, right? So most companies are doing something like this, a lean startup, which is collect them, make a criteria, assign them to an expert, put them in front of a review committee, approve it, turn it into a project. And you can see every time I click on a button, it's requiring me to do something. Oh, hey, we need to put in what's the net benefit. We need to put in who the project owner is. So, uh, and then teams manage this, uh, you know, on a Kanban board, you can manage it on a sonar, you can manage it in a variety of ways and, and, uh, yeah, and use it that way. So ideation, our ideation platform, you know, is built for companies to quickly funnel hundreds of ideas. And in Starbucks case, thousands of ideas from 300,000 employees quickly get down to let's test these in our trier kitchen. And oh, by the way, we're going to kick this off in the Northeast region, right? So you here's token voting where people invest in them. You can do traditional KPI scorecards, different, a lot of different ways to to evaluate. So that's 
that's q id8 i won't show the analytics but there's there's all kinds of ways to collect data um you know reporting whereas with startups picture raytheon or picture chick-fil-a has this ecosystem of partners and they're trying to understand who do we have that has uh, a certain technology so let's say Carbon capture, not sure why this is in here, but someone typed this in in a demo before me. All of a sudden I'm researching millions of data points, right? So it, with QScout, it's finding a partner, finding a startup. You can see there's 8,005 companies that came up just by typing in carbon capture. And I'm gonna come in now. And so next era, Florida Power is one of our big clients in, in Florida. And they have this whole mentoring venture partnership group, and they're trying to see who's got patents that we might want to work with and help sell that company, right? I can narrow this down, identify the ones I wanna work with, and then that starts this, we drop them in, we engage them, right? With scouting, it's a little different. Uh, scouting is, is let's meet with the company, let's identify what their skill set is. We have a portfolio of 10 companies that do the same thing. Uh, who who are we interested in for investments? Who are we interested in for partnerships? Who are we interested in for M&A and technology, right? So um, I should probably stop here because I'd rather the rest of this, right? And each one of our tools, same thing. If you're looking at trends, uh, it's a portfolio of trends, right? You have a team of futurists, which is a term being thrown around a lot, but it's companies are looking at hiring people who are experts on AI, machine learning, uh, telemetry, whatever, um, different technologies, and they're building a pipeline of insights around different technologies. So the classic one is Ford. They've been a customer for many years. They have pulled way back on the self-driving vehicle because in their mind, that technology wasn't gonna, they, they did some analysis and realized where that technology is gonna take a lot longer. We should focus on good or bad electric vehicles on right so they you can see ford's made some adjustments and they'll continue to make adjustments uh volkswagen uh with the electric bus i don't know if you've seen this this will launch at the end of this year it's fully electric it'll go almost 500 miles it's being built in chattanooga that's one of one of our early clients that i had uh, almost eight years ago but they moved all that from germany based on realizing in their mind the biggest market for that volkswagen bus because americans like bigger vehicles is the us not europe so uh, and i'm having some internet issues so i'm gonna stop here but um see if i can fix that so uh, does everything make sense or anyone uh, like i said a lot of your clients a lot of your companies you work for or come people you talk to they have our software and they probably don't know it they unless they're in the innovation program so all right well thank you steve and and you know for the people that are that are here that that have been around like you know brian bohan uh he was he was with me back in i was doing this on the federal side um major best there are a lot of people here that that can see why it is that we want to incorporate this into the forum and and into the platform and the benefit that it'll bring bring to us and and the benefit that it can bring to the federal government. Quick question. Um, I, I hate to ask this, but I'm I'm quite intrigued because this looks really brilliant, um, and I'm so glad that you do and you're using it. Um, do you have any competitors? Yeah, yeah, sure. We've got. Uh, so this is a not a very crowded space, um, but. Um, there's there's probably three, four, five main. And in fact, if you Google, um, there's a lot of monopolizing going on. So Hype is a German one. They just acquired a company called Planbox. So Hype, Planbox, Bright Idea, Q Markets. Um, I hate to say this. There used to be a company called Idea Scale. They still exist, but they all, they they rolled the dice and did everything with government. They did they focused on someone. Uh, help them get fed ramp approved the problem is they've become they they they're yeah they they almost don't exist so the same competitors i come up against wazoku is one um those are the big names they're, every week there's a new company but then they usually disappear but the the big five would <laughs> would we sit in the market we're the largest in the world at this um at, at what we do we're an israeli startup which i i've always loved um again um there's a good relationship between the U.S. and Israel. We had our first when um, in 2019, uh, without getting political, uh, there was an agreement signed between uh, several Middle Eastern countries and Israel and the U.S. And uh, the former president was involved in that. And the immediate thing that happened is every Middle Eastern 
country all of a sudden reached out to an Israeli company. So we, our first non uh, Middle Eastern customer was a company called Edge, big defense contractor in Dubai. And they were very excited to work with Israeli technology. So um, although just to be clear, this is Q Markets USA headquartered in Connecticut. I'm based out of Dallas and uh, everything runs through the US, but the parent company sits in Israel. And so the technology in Israel is they're they're very good at what they do. So but uh, yeah, our competitive field, there's about five. Like if you said, hey, I'm doing an RFP, can you give me some names? It's, it's always us, bright idea, uh, hype. It used to be hype yeah. plan box. Now there's they're only one company. So those would be the big three. Uh, idea scale, unfortunately, is not a I think they're probably waiting. Yeah, to be I, I heard the same thing. And that, that was what, what was my question, because I, you know, I remember that pivot for idea scale or that, you know, that they're gap. government. Um, they're difficult yeah. in the government space. They they really are. But it's just the the platform maturity is, is that would I tell you our, our advantage is clear with with them. Whereas yeah. so oh, great. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I got a question for you. How do you uh, run with funding? Are, are you like a yearly subscription? Oh, from yeah, the, gov question. the government side, if the government has a subscription, is that open to all government individuals or is it by unit? Something like that. Thanks. Yes. Everyone's uh, just like with Microsoft, they're all uh, separate. In fact, Federal Reserve Bank was Federal Reserve Bank specifically of Cleveland. Their license was was for Cleveland and then it's branched out across the U.S. Uh, yeah, everyone has their. So, so for example, if you said, um, hey, I, I work for the city of uh, Charlotte and we have 10,000 employees, we would sell you a license for 10,000 employees. If you wanted to open it up to the city of Charlotte, we'd say, uh, here's the license for that. So it's licensed based on your specific uh, company, department, uh, that type of thing. Yeah. So it's modular. Some guys are paying very low amounts. And some some people are paying quite a bit, right? So uh, it's it's scalable. Understood. Thanks. All right. Anyone else? Okay, if you're talking, you're unmuted or you're muted. I mean, so, so there's some. If you don't mind, I, I could I have another minute just to kind of give. Oh yeah, some yeah. I mean, yeah. You still have twelve. So yeah, that's why I, I, I wanted to hear if I like because sometimes people go, "Hey, I'm in the wrong room. I was. This is not what I thought I was going to see. I need to step out and go into the other classroom." Um, some examples. Um, uh, one of my favorite ones. Um, so Swarovski, right? They're a crystal maker mm -hmm. out of Austria, very expensive uh, retail, very tight margins. If you go into, a, and I don't own one of these, but go into a Mercedes dealership, go into a Porsche, Lexus, go into a high-end dealership and say, can I get, do you have the Swarovski headlight? I don't know if anyone's seen it, but Swarovski was always a B2C company. They made all their money off of direct to consumers. They ran a challenge once and said, does anybody have ideas on how we can engage B2B? That's where we think the bigger <laughs> revenue is. Some, some, uh, some janitor was driving home from work one night and saw an Audi pass it in Austria and said, that's a pretty cool looking headlight. Uh, what would our headlights look like if we put Swarovski crystals in them? And so they put together a prototype um, it's it's now uh, a product, obviously, that that luxury dealerships use, but um, it's brought them almost a billion dollars in revenue in the last ten years. Right? It's been a big money big money maker for them. Uh, we have a client. Um, uh, let me think of some ones I can share. If you if you're in uh, in Europe, right? So I um, we have a lot of Swiss clients, and not just Nestle, but Swiss Post, Swiss Bank. Um, uh, UBS, um, you know, AstraZeneca and some of the pharmaceuticals, uh, Pfizer's, there's a lot of companies that, that are headquartered there that we work with. Um, Swiss Post had this idea to put in, uh, use drones, using the drone example, to transport uh, uh, blood samples for life-threatening illnesses, right? If someone was in an ER and that, if you've ever been to Switzerland, they have these things called cantons and you could see a village that was two miles away, but to drive to that village could take mm -hmm. hours, right? Just It's such a ridiculous uh, way to get around. And so they started using drones and they have they calculate lives saved in, I mean, they're actually using data to say, hey, we save on average 50 lives a year, right? Mm -hmm. think, think of the value of that of, hey, because we turned around blood samples quicker in a remote uh, village. Uh, and then one of the good ones was, this was before COVID, but Lufthansa had an aging fleet of 747s. Uh, this was, uh, they've been a client for almost, they're one of our earliest clients. And uh, Lufthansa 
did a challenge and said, we're about, mm -hmm. to, we're about to send several hundred 747s to die. If you've ever been to Arizona, you have that big grave, right, of planes where they just put them there and no one's going to use them. And so Lufthansa ran a challenge on these planes still work. What can we do with them? Um, the challenge was during the time of, of Ebola in Africa, and there was a uh, someone put together a prototype and quickly Lufthansa developed what they called the Ebola plane. And the Ebola plane was eight self-contained compartments that had full medical staff, air, everything you would need to protect everyone else in a separate container. And they could do this eight at a time. And so they've been running some of these 747s for over a decade um, and they, they, they can't, it's sold out. Other airlines are starting to copy this. Some of them already have, but Lufthansa was really the pioneer of let's create um, old 747s and turn them into hospitals in the air. That's 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 something they they did a long time ago. So um, a lot of a lot of cool stuff that comes out of this. Some of the best stuff though is just saving. Um, we had a oil company that ran with one idea and, and saved $250 million. We have a mining company in Chile that saved $40 million with a good idea, right? So um, the key is our platform lets companies get out of the way of ideas. They they can automate. They can just go boom, 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 move to the next step, move to the next step, move to leadership. Let's approve it. Let's build it. So. Um, if you if you're familiar with Jira or some other project management tools, they're great, but they're not. We're the front end of that, right? Companies start with us. They identify the problems. They build prototypes. Most by you know MVPs. They put together uh, what they need, and right when they're ready, then generally we connect with. So we integrate with any tool, right? Jira, Slack, uh, Teams, Power BI. So it's uh, our job is to kind of connect with whatever tools you want so that you get the, the, the data you need. So Steve, you're you're talking about the uh, the ideation process and, and the research and that. What about the follow-up? What about preventing these things from stagnating? There's a big challenge with innovation. Yeah. How do you address that? So I won't show the screenshots, but I, if I pulled up the platform again, it is a project management tool, but for the front end. So picture you submit an idea immediately. You, you've you set up with the platform um, uh, rules. So you say, I don't know if you've heard, there, there's a famous book about uh, kind of talks about revolutionary change in how companies grew. And I don't remember which branch of the military it was. It said, if you don't respond, if someone has an idea, and you don't respond within 30 ideas, this whole thing happens. And all of a sudden, I, 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 I need to grab this book again. It was a book I read years ago, but the military was specifically brought up. But inside the tool, you could say when an idea comes in after 30 days, if it does something. So let's say it's um, 10 people volunteer to help. Um, five people, on average, it scores a certain way it automatically goes to the next step, right? So it has built in things. And oh, by the way, when it goes to the next step, if you're that person, you get assigned a task, you get an email and you then say, um, hey, it's two days till your project's due for your piece. Can you submit it? it? It notifies if you want leadership. And then we have reports that say, here's your workflow and here's your bottlenecks. Here's the departments, here's the, the specific groups. Here's the stage where the ideas are stopping, right? And usually it's leadership, to be honest. It's review committees. Uh, the idea was built, put together. We have a business case. Leadership hasn't made a decision yet. Um, so leadership's leadership's the biggest hurdle in innovation, and it's also the biggest enabler. It's a it's like the I don't know if that applies to to government and to to military, but it certainly applies to corporate USA. Is uh, when a company succeeds or fails, it's generally the leadership getting out of the way of their employees. So okay, thank you. Are there other questions out there? I put your I put your contact information in the uh, in the chat, Steve. Someone asked for. It. Oh yeah, yeah. Please just uh, shoot me an email. Happy to happy to talk. So yeah, and please copy me on those because uh, we track everything that we put together and want to move it forward as well. Yeah. But anyone else? All right. Well, thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. Great presentation. Um, great information and I don't see anything in the chat.